What's up, guys, and welcome to a uh, the final part of the storage server uh, build. And uh, basically, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna install Unraid. So you're gonna want a decent brand uh, USB drive. I've got a Lexar eight gigabyte drive here, uh, and then we're just gonna format it, make sure there's nothing important on it. Um, and you can do this quickly, just uh, setting it to a uh, FAT32. And um, you also have to uh, make the label actually um, unraid in all caps. Then we're going to head over to the unraid website, download the latest, uh, the latest version of unraid. And then once that's downloaded, you're going to open it up and then uh, just copy all the files into your uh, freshly formatted USB drive. And then once that's done, all you have to do to make this a bootable drive is run the batch file that's included with the uh, the files that you've just downloaded. And then once that's done, your USB drive is ready to go, and we can move on to the next part, which is uh, just plugging the drive in and um, doing the configuration. Okay, so now we have our fan, or not our fans, our fans are done. Uh, we have our USB drive with Unraid. Oops. And that is attached to the back in a USB s uh, slot. I'm going to probably use an extension cable and move it inside the case so no one can unplug it because that is our OS. Also, we want network plugged in, which I've got. Turn the thing on. It's nice and quiet now thanks to Noctua fans. I've got a single drive in right now, right there. And uh, once you boot it up, it'll boot from USB, and it'll go through a initialization uh, thing. And then once, since you have the network hooked up, which you need to have, DHCP will give you an address. And now we go back over to the uh, workstation, and we're going to configure it from there. Okay, so now we do have everything up and running. We're going to open up a browser window here. 192.168.2.12. Is what we got from DHCP and now that we have this set up we're going to uh, get our trial key what we want to do is add our email address in here so when you uh, get your email which I just checked uh, you get a URL and what you do is you paste it in here and hit install key It'll download it, tell you it's installed, and we're done. So now we have Unraid Server OS running, and uh, we have our 30-day trial. So I just noticed, because I'm actually recording this part before I did my LSI RAID card to HBA, HBA mode um, video, which I thought I was going to have to do. Turns out my uh, RAID card is already in IT mode. So uh, my smart status is, uh, is visible here. So this is SDB. This is the one hard drive that I have currently in here. And we can go in here and we can check out all of the uh, smart information that's coming directly from the drive, which is really nice. So turns out I don't have to do that, which sucks because I wanted to actually make a video on that. So we're getting close to the end of the, uh, the server project. And uh, basically all we have left is to fill it with drives. So, I actually recently went to uh, PAX East in Boston, and uh, in a Newegg competition, I actually won two of their, uh, two of these Seagate Fire CUDA drives, and uh, yeah, so we're going to use these. I, I needed two drives, wasn't expecting to pick them up in Boston at PAX, so we have these. I searched everywhere for these freaking screws, because these 2.5 inch drives use a smaller set of screws, and uh, I never use them in a case because SSDs always have clips and stuff to hold them in. So, yeah, these I went digging to find those. Um, and then we've got this this one to throw in this sled. And then we've also got the other drive that's already in there. So we're gonna start with three drives because I do have to transfer all of my uh, data that's on my other NAS right now uh, to this before I can put the drives in because those drives need to be reformatted for the uh, the Unraid format. So let's put this in and then we'll go throw them in the 
uh, in the server. Okay, so those are in. And those are gonna go in my first two hard drive spots in my uh, in my NAS, and then uh, we've got one one terabyte to throw in there, and then once I transfer all my files, I've got three more drives to throw in there. So we're gonna have a total of six right off the bat in the Unraid server. So, yeah, let's move over there and put these in, and then we'll move to the actual configuration on the desktop. What we got is our SSHD, Seagate Fire CUDA, it's going to go in our slot zero, and that will be our parity disk. And that way, we'll be able to find it relatively easily if I uh, need to replace it. Disk number two is going to be the second SSHD. Make sure that's in all the way. There we go, that's seated, and then we've got just a regular one terabyte hard drive. That's gonna go in slot three. Oops, did I get that in right? And that went in fine over there. Okay, well I guess that disk is gonna go over there for now until I figure out why that was so hard to get in. And there we go. We've got our first three disks in. I've got three more coming out of this. And then, uh, yeah, let's move on over to the the uh, setup on uh, on the PC, setting up on RAID. Well, now we have our drives in. I did switch it up a bit. Uh, the Seagate drives that I originally put in that I won, uh, they aren't working with Unraid. For some reason, I'm getting IO errors on both of them, and I know they're not bad drives because I've put them in uh, I put them in my Windows server, and they work absolutely fine. They pass smart and write data and whatnot. Uh, and I've also found a thread online on Unraid's uh, forums that also report the same thing with Seagate SSHDs. So if you guys have any idea what that's about, let me know in the comments. That would be great. But uh, for now, I've got four uh, one terabyte drives in. This is a one terabyte SATA drive, and these three are one terabyte SAS drives. Uh, they're all Seagate. These ones are Constellation ES drives, and these are this one is a might be a Barracuda drive. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so this is basically how it looks once you get the thing up and running and set up. So if we head over to the dashboard, you'll see all of the, um, the drives here that before you, you start, there'll be, they'll be under unassigned. And if they have any issues, the, uh, this thumbs up will change to a triangle or an X, or this will let you know, uh, you got your temperatures. Um, I'm going to close my window. And then also you have your parity status, which I have I did mine yesterday just to um, get it done because it does take a couple hours to, to write a terabyte of data. Um, we've got our system specs down here. Uh, so basically when you start, you have your drives plugged in, you come over to the main page and you assign them to where you want them to go. So mine, I have... Uh, this is slot four in my uh, chassis. This is my parity drive. These three are slots one, two, and three, and I just set them as disk one, two, and three. So it's easy to find them if they go bad. I also labeled them, so that's always good as well. Uh, you set them in your disks. Basically, this is your protection drive. It has a um, uh, does a calculation on these three drives and sets the corresponding bit on this drive to uh, the outcome so that if one of these drives die, this drive can emulate the data off of it and also rebuild the drive that dies. So, um, yeah, that's just like a basic overview of how this works. Um, and also, these are all running XFS file systems. Uh, I don't remember where to go find where to get to that, but anyways, this is what I have set up right now. I'm going to add two more one terabyte drives. Uh, one thing to note, uh, the parity drive uh, has to be the largest drive or equal to so if this is one terabyte then nothing down here can be more than one terabyte if this is two terabytes then these can be up to two terabytes as well um, but if you wanted to add two terabytes to this you couldn't until you added also a two terabyte drive as your parity uh, and then you also have the option for two parity drives you can have it so two drives can fail um, 
I'm just going with the one. Um, and then you can also add cache devices, which I'm going to eventually get uh, two SSDs for this. Uh, you can set two SSDs in RAID 1 using ButterFS, I believe. And what they'll do is when you're writing to the, the, the server, it'll write to those cache devices first for speed. And then later on, it will transfer them over to one of your storage drives. Now we have this done. Um, when you start the array initially, you'll be asked to format any drive that's uh, deemed new and not the correct file system. So that'll take a few minutes. And then uh, you'll also, I'm just going to hit start. Um, you'll also have to sync the parity disk, which will take, mine took two hours. But once that's done, your array will be completely up. And uh, you'll have a green dot up here, and all these will be green, and you're good to start building shares. You also have a few options down here, like spinning up and spinning down the drives, uh, some history on your parity. Uh, you can check parity whenever you want. And you can also check or uncheck the right corrections to parity, so that's if it finds uh, something out of sync, it'll fix it. Or you can uncheck it, and I believe it'll just notify you. Um, you can stop your array, uh, and then you got your power and reboot. And uh, yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a quick share, um, SMB share, for uh, Windows, um, which I've never done before, so this will be the first time. So we're going to call this, um, I'm just going to call it test because I'm going to change stuff later, I think. Um, okay, whatever that is. Uh, comments, I uh, don't need it. Allocation method, um, we're only going to use one drive, but these things, basically what it does is if you have more than one drive allocated to it, um, it will choose either the most free, it'll fill, it'll use one drive until it's full and then move to the next one, or high water is, um, I'm not exactly sure what that is actually. It might be just to the most full, but that would be fill up. So I don't know what high water means, but either way, I'm only going to use a, um, a single drive. Uh, this is basically where it splits on the drive. Um, that doesn't matter. Um, I guess it gives you a an overview on here. Uh, included disk. So I'm just going to use disk one. You can choose as many disks as you want. You can sp make your shares on different disks. The thing about Unraid is if one disk drives or one disk dies, just the data on that disk will be lost or will will be emulated by parity. These two disks that have the other data on it, they'll be completely uh, together and you can pull them out of this, plug it into a Linux machine or a desktop and and read the data off of it like it was a normal hard drive. There's no like RAID configuration or anything like that, hence unraid. So if I lost this disk completely, the whole array isn't gone. These two disks still have its their da their data. So that's the point of it. So we're going to use disk one, excluded disks. Um, doesn't matter because we're only using one. Uh, that's if you have like 32 disks and you only wanted to get like exclude one or two of them. Uh, disk cache, no, I don't have one. Enable copy on write auto is fine. So now we can add share. Uh, and then we've got our SMB settings for Windows. Uh, share names test, export sure. Um, OSX don't have that. Security, uh, we want private. Well, actually, let's let, just do it public for now, just to test. And then what we can do now is we can open up this. We can find our device on the network, hopefully. Okay, there's Unraid NAS. That is our, our box up here. Go into that. Hopefully everything's here. And then we've got test. So there, there's our share drive. So what we can do, we can map this as a network drive. Um, and we can assign a letter to it. Uh, I'm just going to give it K for now, because why not? Uh, I don't need to reconnect, so I'm not going to use this one. And uh, finish. That's it. There we go. We've got our test thing here. We can create, hopefully... My read and write is good. Test.txt. 
and write stuff in it. It's over here. Save it. Works fine. And then we can go over here to our shares. There's test, and we can actually browse the file structure. And there's our test.txt, and that's what's in it. So that's how you set up a share. I'm going to set up my own uh, setup for uh, like video files and um, backups and whatnot. This is basically, see, since I use only one drive and I use the first one, um, this is how much how much data I have in available to put in this this folder. If I use all three, I'd have three terabytes. Um, there's also a lot of stuff you can add to this. Uh, like plugins, I have a a um, temperature monitoring plugin that shows up down here for the CPU and uh, CPU fan RPM. Um, this adds some enhancements to the the GUI. Um, you know, there's there's a ton of plugins I haven't gone through a lot. Another cool thing about this, which I like, is once I upgrade the actual hardware inside of the server. Right now, it's not powerful at all, but once I get some more powerful hardware in there and uh, put the Sandy's fans back in so it stays cool and it's not in my bedroom anymore so I don't care about the noise, uh, you can run Docker uh, containers off of this, which is pretty cool. And you can also run virtual machines, pretty much anything you want off of this as well. Uh, it's, I believe it's just using KVM or... Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it should just be using KVM. Um, and you can, they already have preset configurations for all of these. You can also build your own, which is nice. You got some stats going on here. Um, yeah, and right now I have my trial for 12 days remaining. Uh, you can extend your trial. I just did that because it's been already a month since I made the other video. Uh, but you also can, um, well, once that's up, You've you got to pay for it. It's not free, but they have reasonable uh, prices. It's not a subscription base. It's just a one-time software purchase. So um, yeah, I'm probably gonna go with the Pro just so I can expand all the way up to my 12. I think actually, I think the let's actually take a look. Let's go to Unraid. These are their packages. So we've got okay. So I can I can just go with the Plus and you got up to 12 devices to attach. I might just go for the Pro just for the future if I ever want to. I don't know if actually they have an upgrade option, but this is your most basic. You got six drives attached, 59 bucks. Lifetime, you get all the updates and everything. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty decent price. I'm probably going to go with either that or that, depending on if I can upgrade from this to this eventually. But right now my server only has 12 drive bays anyway, so that would be the most economic way to go. So once my 12 days are up, which I can actually extend it for another 14 days after that, um, gotta purchase the uh, the key. So that's basically the tour of Unraid. If you guys have any questions uh, based on how to do something in Unraid. I'm not an expert on this. This is my first time doing it as well. I just thought I'd record my, my journey setting up my file server, which you guys seem to have enjoyed. It's been my most popular videos other than my server rec videos for, for a while. Um, yeah, just let me know in the comments. Share your thoughts. If I'm doing something wrong, let me know. And uh, I'm open to, open to criticism. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's that's probably the end of um the server storage server series because now it's all set up and ready to go i will be adding two more drives to this um so i might make a short video on how to how to add drives to the uh, array without um without losing parity which is a method to to, to do so you, when if a drive dies while you're doing this uh you won't lose any data um but yeah, that'll be next time. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Leave me a like if, uh, you know, you found this interesting or helpful or any of the above. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.